What's up everyone? I'm going to do an unboxing video today. If you guys remember from the last episode of the Rocketry Show, I was told that I am flying a Skinwalker um, from Lock Precision on that episode with Lock Precision with Jay, Dave, and Stan, and CG and Jim. So I am going to unbox this big old rocket that's chilling over here, and I just wanted to do it for all you guys. So, you know, I got my trusty lock water bottle that I take to all my launches and some iced coffee. So I'm going to be taking some sips here and there. I hope that's okay. And if not, I don't really care. All right. So here is my Skinwalker. Now, the one thing specific about this particular rocket is each one of the labels comes numbered. So the deal is this particular rocket is number four. So for the actual Skinwalker episode, Jason had said that, Jason had said that the first two rockets were made for Skinwalker. And then of course, Lock Precision has number three and I get number four, which is totally okay with me. I'm not mad about that whatsoever. Please make sure you use safety when you use your box cutters. I wear gloves um, when I'm dealing with this, you know, just because of cardboard and, uh, you know, um, I have really dry hands, so stuff just kind of slips out of my hand. And because of that, I just want to make sure that I don't um, cut my hands on paper cutters or anything like that. So the gloves help quite a bit. So in opening the box right away, the first thing I see is... One of the um, stickers that Locke sends you. Then um, if you notice, uh, one of the things that Locke does is they always put, you know, uh, different type pieces of cardboard in your box so that you're able, you know, to get the stuff. It's a Skinwalker for the camper. Thank you guys. That's really nice of you. I appreciate that. That's a really cool looking decal. Um, when Locke sends you stuff, they, they're pretty good about, you know, putting all the, the shipping stuff inside of the rocket and then wrapping things accordingly. So, um, right here looks like the nose cone that's uh, just lightly wrapped in some of the shipping stuff that they have. And I don't see anything in there. And it looks like we got the switch band. Uh, this particular rocket comes with the seven and a half inch nose cone and it comes with a one inch switch band, which is just located here on the nose. I'm just gonna set that over here on my table. Hopefully it doesn't roll off. Next item looks like tube number one. Um, I want to say these are 30 inch, 30 inch tubes lengthwise and uh, you know just 7.6 inches in diameter. So, okay, so tube number one I'll set aside here, and then inside of tube number one is wow the actual decals that come with it. Wow, guys, these are fantastic looking decals. That is really, really cool. So I'm gonna set these over here on my other bench. Then, um, you know, obviously you gotta find your airspace. Whenever you get a box from any of your rocket vendors, make sure that you just uh, take a quick peek through all the packaging. Um, sometimes you'll see hardware hiding in some of these. And, you know, that way you don't have to email them and tell them later that you're missing something. So always take a quick peek. Go for tube number two. Okay, this is pretty heavy, so it's going to have a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. All right. The booster section, how you can tell is because obviously it's where the fins are slotted. All right, inside of the booster, we have the 98 millimeter motor tube, I'm assuming. Let me just unwrap that quickly, just to validate. So this is not a typical four inch tube that Lock sells. Those are usually white in color. If you notice that this one is, uh, you know, the craft paper color, and that's a little bit thicker as far as the diameter goes. And this is what Lock uses for the majority of the motor tubes. Super long, that's probably, you know, equivalent to what would be like a five grain type tube if it was a motor. 
Um, I got a full long stiffy tube, and that's actually for your electronics bay. Then we have coupler number one, right here. And then I have a bag of hardware. So it looks like I have a Y harness. Looks like I have a Y harness. Then I have um, two of the uh, 25 foot, uh, 5 8 inch uh, nylon straps. And then I asked for a drogue. Um, now I don't have a main parachute in mind because I'm gonna use the one that I used for my level three, which is a spear chutes. And then um, we got some huge quick links and then some 15, you know, 15, 15 rail buttons are just right here. Um, you know, we could see that in the package. So thank you for this guys. And then we have a half stiffy coupler. Um, I'll have to probably talk to Jason to see what this is specifically for. Um, they think this is gonna be some kind of a header for something and I'll have to take a deeper look. And then um, it looks like I have two stiffy tubes. So um, one of them's cut in half. That's, this one's typically used for the electronics bay. And then um, the long one I'm gonna assume is gonna be part of the reinforcement for the body. So two quick seconds, let me move, this, move these items. So one of the reasons that I cleaned up my shop is because I intend on building this now. If you see here, I already have some of my carbon fiber cloths. Got some different co colors from uh, one of my rocket friends. Thank you very much for this, James. So I'll figure out how I'm gonna do those colors later. Let's look at tube number three. This one's also pretty heavy. All right. Tube number three has a lot of goodies. Got a smiley face there. And Jason, what did you do? All right. So you got my centering rings here, uh, seven and a half by 98 aft. And then you got the uh, locking fin set up for four fins. So this is gonna probably be a four fin rocket. And then it's got U-bolt hardware and the forward centering ring. Okay. And then it looks to contain what is uh, coupler number two. So we have three 30 inch tubes uh, this one here is damaged just a little bit, but um, that's probably from shipping, not a big deal. Um, I actually can fix that fairly easily. And uh, if you guys want a quick tip on how to fix uh, something that's bent like that, try to push it back in place with your hand as much as possible. Line some uh, slow cure epoxy around the inside and then uh, take a drum sander and clean it off. Guarantee you it'll be nice and snug. You won't have any issues at that point. Still not done. Got some more. Looks like fins. And got some extra packaging. So we'll go ahead and set the box to the side. The box is empty. All right, great thing about lock is their fins. Um, they are seven ply. So I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see. Um, they're laser cut, so obviously they're a little dirty from that. Um, the ply that they use is a pretty good quality ply. And if you notice, these are pretty true. I don't see a lot of, you know, warp in those. They're um, 3 eighths thick, so you technically don't have to laminate these or blast them or anything. You can literally just uh, start to use them. Um, it depends on your building technique and what you like to do. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to glass my fins yet or carbon fiber them. There's really no need to because they're pretty stout. And, uh, you know, just depending on what you're going to sim with a high thrust motor might, you know, help educate you on what you want to do that way. But um, the fins are nice, guys. You know, I, nice shape. They look familiar. It uh, looks like a Magnum type fin. So. So I'm gonna open this on the side and see if this is something I can show everybody.
and it is, it's actually necessary. So this is the electronic sled. So you have um, the seven and a half inch electronic sled with instructions. And then um, you have one of the smaller sleds. So to keep everything, you know, kind of con conformed with, you know, what lock does in general, that's, that's pretty nice. So um, one thing I'm gonna do is uh, take just a quick minute here and I'm gonna try to do a dry fit for everybody so that you guys can see what that looks like. So give me a few minutes and I'll try to do that while we're here. Nice fit, guys. That's a nice fit. The slots are cut pretty good on the booster tube. All right, so because the uh, the tube is bent a little bit, it's going to require some uh, fendangling. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to dry fit for this for you guys now. So I mean, just to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at here, um, 115 inches. It's uh, quite a bit of stuff. So not a big deal. Um, a lot of this stuff can be fixed fairly easily. This particular rocket is gonna be huge. It's gonna be overwhelmingly awesome. And uh, you know, the decals, I just am amazed at how beautiful those are. So um, looks like I have two of those in there for the 004. And then um, here's what the top, uh, the top wrap will kind of look like. So um, yeah, I, I you know, we'll have to try to fix that. And then you have the big skinwalker symbol there. So yeah, man, this is a, this is really good stuff, guys. The skinwalker is going to be an awesome rocket. I'm excited to fly it at Airfest. Um, we still need to figure out what the motors are. So once we do, I'll let everybody know. And then if you guys have any questions, comments, um, you know, info at lockprecision.com. If you need to get a hold of Jason and Dave from Lock, if you want to talk to me, you can hit me up on Facebook. That's usually the easiest thing to do. If you want to, you know, send something to the rocketry show, go to the rocketry show.com. And on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a little thing that says send feedback and you'll be able to click on it and record kind of like a voicemail. I really like to do that with everybody because then we can air your voice on the air. And if you don't want that done, then what you could do is just email us at mailbag at the rocketry show.com. I'm really excited for this. I'll keep everybody posted on the progress on social media like I usually do. Um, just, you know, everybody can kind of see my lab down here. You see my paint booth and then just my little work areas. My bench is over here um, behind the Skinwalker box. I have all my electronics that I was working on for my alien interceptor, which is down there in the, in the back. And then um, over here is where I work on my low power kits and, you know, do other things. So when it comes to, you know, doing rocketry and building all this stuff, I mean, I really like to do it. And I think, uh, one of, the, one of the coolest things that kind of brought me into rocketry is it took me out of a bad place and it you know brought me in contact with a lot of you guys. It brought me in contact with a lot of people that I call friends now. And you know I just gotta tell you, I appreciate you guys and I appreciate being a voice for you. And if there's anything that you guys ever need, you know, even on a personal level or when it comes to rocketry or when it comes to ideas for the show, just whatever it might be, feel free to ping me. Feel free to reach out to me, you know, message me. I mean, I, I talk to everybody as much as possible. And, you know, I just want everybody to know that I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching my video. And I hope, you know, to fly with you all soon. Thank you so much. Have a good night.